Some of us got that Uncle Rico syndrome in here, if you're honest with yourself. You know, Uncle Rico, Napoleon Dynamite, some of you got that, you think you're living in, you're still living in 1982, you know what I mean? If coach would have put me in, you know, in the fourth quarter, we would have won state, you know what I mean? I'd be soaking in the hot tub with my, my, uh, my, hot, my girlfriend, my high school girlfriend, and man, I could throw a football over them mountains. Rico, you know Rico? All right, some of you are living in 1982, still like burdened by these unfulfilled expectations, imprisoned by them. And you know, by the way, unfulfilled, unfulfilled expectations, that's the, that's the root. It's the source of all your anger issues. Every time you fly off the handle, you get upset, you get frustrated, you lash out on people around you. It's because of this. It's because you had an unfulfilled expectation. You may want to write it down this way. You have this burden of a past disappointment. It's, it's, I'm just disappointed that it didn't work out. It's a past, it, it really didn't work out the way I thought. Here's what the Bible says about that in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. See, a lot of us in this room, you're going to heaven. A lot of us in this room, you're going to heaven, but our hearts are just a little heavy right now. Our hearts are, are a little bit sick right now because we had a hope and it didn't happen. We had a disappointment that occurred and we're just, if we're honest, we're miserable because of that thing in our past, that disappointment. And by the way, let me just say to you that part of the problem I believe in this area is part of the problem in this whole thing is that we have unrealistic expectations. Yeah, I, I, think, I think that, that we, sometimes we have unrealistic expectations like we want earth to be heaven and earth is never going to measure up to heaven. It's not. Understand this, that Jesus came to rescue you from this earth, from a world full of trouble. In fact, Jesus said, I promise you, you're going to have a lot of it in this, in this world. Didn't he say that? Like, you will have tribulation. You will have trouble. But I've come to help you overcome it. I have came to rescue you from to get you out from there. But we keep wanting God to make it better. God, make it better. God is not going to make heaven until it's time. This is never going to be heaven. So some of our expectations is just unrealistic. We want earth to be heaven. Here's the second reason why our past becomes a prison an area, and that is untreated pain. Untreated pain. And I'll tell you the culprit of untreated pain here is we learn this dark, dreadful art of just tucking it away, just sweeping it under the carpet, like just, just act like it didn't happen, just, just smile and move on, just smile and nod. You know what? Life's tough. It's tough. Get over it. It's tough. It's not that big a deal, but it was a big deal. It is a big deal. And we didn't give it, listen, and we didn't give it the attention that it actually needed in our life. And it's an untreated pain. There's, and I believe that this, the, like a spirit of religiosity or that religion spirit, that, uh, that just, that, that plays into this as well. Where, where we, we have to put on, you know, when you come to church, you're around church people, you got to put on the face. Nothing can't be wrong. You got to dress right, look the part, smile. You, you, so so re this religious spirit will, will cause you to, to just pretend when, no, there's a tension that needs to be had. That's why I always dreamed about a church that would be, we call it real, relaxed, and relevant. You don't, you don't need to fake it. You don't need to put on. You can, you can be real. You can be authentic because it's the only way that you're going to receive. How are you going to heal that thing that you won't even face? That you're not even acting like it exists, how are you supposed to heal it and bring it before the altar of God? Jeremiah prophesied that there would be a whole generation of people like this. In Jeremiah chapter 6, he prophesied this. They dress the wound of my people as though it were not serious. Oh, you'll be okay. It'll be all right. Peace, peace. But I'm not okay. But, but I have no peace. I mean, it's, it's not okay. And some of us just, we are bound. We have a prison. We're in prison by untreated pain that really didn't give it the attention that it needed. And for some of you, it was because of maybe the, the religious atmosphere that you grew up in or that you find yourself in today, the spirit you find yourself in. You're imprisoned by untreated pain. Here's the third one, third area that imprisons us of our past, and that is unresolved yesterdays unresolved yesterdays. I'm talking about really the, the real corporate with this one is that we just don't deal with it quickly enough. 
We just don't resolve the issue. Uh, I want to give you some sad news, but a great solution about this, you guys. The sad news is bad stuff's going to happen to you. All right, that's the sad news. Like, it's, it's going to happen. Difficult things, difficult people. But the real problem isn't that things happen to us that hurt us, or people say things that hurt us, or the mistakes that we even make hurt us. That's not the real problem. The real problem is we just put it off. We just delay. And some of us are simply suffering today, and we're in prison today because of delayed repair. Delayed repair. Some of you guys, you know what happens when you delay the repair on your vehicle, right? It starts to break down on you. And some of you are breaking down spiritually, emotionally, in your relationships because you're, you delayed. You're just, you, you, you have an unresolved. You have issues that you just, you have unresolved. It's unresolved yesterdays. In fact, I want to show you a, the power of, of something not dealt with soon enough. In Ephesians chapter 4, uh, 426, in your notes, a powerful verse. It says, in your anger, do not sin, right? Here's, here's the secret how. You could not let anger, which you're going to have, all right? It's going to happen. Here's the secret how not to let it turn into sin, and that is don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. So the Bible is giving you the benefit of the doubt, okay? You're going to get angry. Like, you're going to get mad at people. People, you're going to get mad at people. It's going to happen, but, but when it happens, um, don't sleep on it. Don't, 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 go to, don't go to bed on that. Resolve it quickly. Settle issues quickly. And he says, if you don't, the next line, it says, if you don't, you're actually giving the devil a little crack in the window into your life. You're leaving room. You're, you're just, you're, you're a little foothold. You're giving the enemy a little edge into your life. Why? Not because it happened to you. It's just because we didn't resolve it quickly. Now the enemy has room in our life because of unresolved yesterdays and issues. That's why, actually, this is one of the requirements for leadership in the church, that, that you're not to quarrel or be a gossip, that you're supposed to reconcile matters quickly. That's a leadership principle in the scriptures, because if not, all, what you're doing is open the room for the enemy in your life, in that ministry, in that team, if you don't know how to go to the person. Go and reconcile quickly, resolve those issues. And I've learned a lot about people over the years in ministry. And um, I tell you, people aren't very good at this. They're not good at resolving issues quickly. It's just not. But it's something that you, honestly, this is a discipline that you need to learn to develop if you, want, if you want to see breakthroughs happen, if you want to be free. This is a discipline we have to learn to develop. I tell people all the time. I tell our staff, different leaders, like, if I have a problem with you or an issue or if there's I will go to you directly. And if I'm not going to you directly, it's because I got nothing in my heart against you. You will never, like my, my staff, my leaders and stuff, they, will ne they never have to worry. I tell them, you'll never have to worry about how I feel if there's like an issue or something like that. Because you'll know. I will let you know whenever there's an issue. I, I, I promise, and I'm not going to let you know, like dump on you. I'll let you know. I will reconcile that and bring my heart before you for reconciliation. Can I tell you something? I sleep good at night. I never, I never lay down and worry like, I wonder why they, why they said that. And I wonder if, I wonder if, and make it all about me, you know? Oh, oh I, I never do that. Never. And you know what I say oftentimes? Because you know what? People are going to be people, and I recognize that. People are going to say things about me. People are going to say hurtful things. It's just going to happen. I'm a leader. People like to take shots at leaders, and I, I get that. You know what I say when that happens? They didn't know. They just didn't know. They don't, they don't know. I don't let it land on me. I don't let it stick to me. And for some of you, you're letting things stick. The, it, the unresolved things are just sticking on you. And hurting people will always hurt people. They didn't know. It's not about me. It's really something about them. Unresolved yesterday. Some of you are in that prison. It's, it's just gotcha. Unresolved yesterday. Here's, here's the next area that from our past that kind of imprisons us, and I'm going to put it this way, an unhealthy view of self. Because the things in our past have, in our history, have now defined us. So now we have an unhealthy view of ourself. Can I tell you something? God sees a different view of you. The way God sees you is not the way you see yourself. And if you're constantly living your life with your only assessment of you, 
is you, you, you are, you're going to be imprisoned by it. Because you are, I, I love you, but you, know, you, you are a, a dirty sinner, okay? I love you. I'm a dirty sinner too, okay? I'm a, I got issues and I got, I can, I, you know, I'm just saying, if, if that's your only assessment by what's in your head and what you are going to be imprisoned by yourself, by your unhealthy view of yourself. And check it out. That's not even an accurate picture of who you are. Look what the Bible says. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. I love this. He says, the only accurate way to understand ourselves. Pause right there. Think about that. He said, okay, the only accurate way that you can, that you can view yourself, that you can see yourself, that, that where you draw your identity from, is by what God is and by what he has done for us, not by what we are and what we do for him. Oh, man. See, the real view of you is not, it's not what your teacher said. The real view of you is not what your grandparents or your parents or your friends or your ex or your boyfriends or your girlfriends or other. It's not even what you think of yourself. You're, the real view of you is not even your view of you. The real view of you is what God sees in you. That's the reality. That's the accurate assessment, not what you see yourself. Instead, we're imprisoned by insecurities, unhealthy view of self all the time. Here's the last one. And the key word there isn't even the underlying one, unrepented sin. And I'll tell you, the key word is not the underlying one. The key word right there is unrepented. I want you to notice what I did not say. I did not say unconfessed, and I did not say unforgiven, because that's not, that's not what imprisons us, unconfessed and unforgiven sin. No, 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 no. What's imprisoning us is unrepented sin. Because you see, we'll come into an environment like this on a Sunday, and we get into the presence of God, and therefore things are exposed, and some things that we don't like, and so we, we say, okay, that's it, that's it, okay, Jesus, I don't like that, I don't like that, and I don't want it to be that way anymore, forgive me, God, and we ask forgiveness of things, and we confess some things, and I want you to, I want you to know, right there, God has forgiven you, like that's happening, but the problem is, is that we didn't transfer what we said in here to our life out there, we never change directions. You see, that's what repentance means. Repentance just means to change your direction. To repent is more than just being sorry. It's more than confession. It's more than just saying you're sorry. It's turning around and going in a different direction. It's unrepented sin. This was David, by the way, King David. He wrote some of the Psalms that you find in your book of Psalms. He said this in Psalm 32. He said, when I kept silent, my bones wasted away though my, uh, through my groaning all day long. Notice this next phrase, for day and night, your hand was heavy on me. Like there was a weight. There was just a weight pushing me down. Like my past is, is not a platform. It's not something I'm standing on. It's not giving me a foundation. It's a weight. It's something I'm under. My past is, is, is pressuring. It's pulling me down. It's, it's a weight on me, my strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then he says, Selah, which means think about that for a moment. That's what that means. Selah, just think about that. And I want you to stop and think about that for a while. Because some of you feel the weight of life. We say, well, I, I said I'm sorry, though. I, I asked for forgiveness, but, but we never took the steps to walk out of that mess, to walk out of that situation to walk, to actually walk out of your past. The Bible has a word for it. When, when our past becomes a prison, when our past is holding us back from our breakthrough, holding us back from our potential and our destiny, there's a word that the Bible uses, a Bible word for that. It's in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 through 4. Let me read that to you. It says, For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. Let me stop right there and explain something to you. Um, even though you have a worldly problem, you think you do. You can't fix it with a worldly solution. You know why? Because your problems are not really worldly problems. Your problem is a spiritual problem. And you cannot fix spiritual issues with natural solutions. You cannot fix, you have to fix spiritual issues with spiritual solutions. 
And the Bible is trying to talk you into, there are some reasons why you still have the weight on your shoulders. There is a reason why you're still imprisoned by your past, why it's not a platform for you, but something pulling against you. And that is, you're still trying to fix it naturally. You're still trying to fix it by reading more books, by going to more conferences. You're still trying to fix it by taking even more pills and getting even more therapy. And I'm not against those things, but your solution is not in a natural resource. You have a spiritual problem that needs a spiritual solution. And it says, here, here he says, he says, the weapons that we fight, God says, I got some new ways. I got some new solutions for your breakthrough. I got some new ways that you're going to fight because it's not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, these weapons, they have divine power to demolish, say that word out loud, to demolish strongholds, strongholds. Underline that in your notes right there because that's the biblical word for the prison of your past. That there is a, that it's a stronghold. It's something that's attached to you. It's something that has a stronghold on your life. So let me ask you, what in your past has a stronghold of you? What in your past is preventing you from a breakthrough? What in your past has a stronghold? I looked up that word in the Greek language, stronghold, where it's used right there. And your, your Greek, um, that's what the New Testament, for those of you that don't know, the New Testament was written in the original Greek language. And the Greek language is a lot more descriptive. There are four times as many Greek words than there are English words. So we get a lot when looking into the actual Greek word of what that stronghold is. So I looked into it, and I've been uh, practicing how to say this word for a while. It's in your notes. It's kind of, <clears throat> it's kind of a guttural thing, so I got to clear my throat. Uh, it's ahurama. Ahurama. Yeah, it's, it's like that. You got to get that going. Like you got a kernel stuck in your throat or something. It kind of looks like hoochie mama to me. I don't know. It sounds kind of like it. You know? But that's a, that's a whole different, hoochie mama's a whole different stronghold. You know what I'm saying? We got... This is what it means. This is what it means. It means stronghold. This is what it means. A prisoner locked by, keyword here, write it down, deception. A prisoner locked by deception. It's living your life, check it out, by something that's not even true. So here's, here's the, I'll give you the big idea of the message today. Look up here. Everyone in my eyes, after you write that down. Listen, your prison is not based on a reality. It's a lie. What, what is imprisoning you? Your past, your unresolved yesterdays, your untreated pain, all those, uh, your unmet expectations. It, it's, it's, it's not based on reality. It's based on a lie. What you've been, what's holding you back and what's been carrying, you've been carrying around with a low self-esteem, like it, it, it seems real, because you have the facts to prove it. You know the date and the time it happened. You may even have the report card to show. Look, no, I'm worth this. I'm nothing. I'm stupid. I'm an idiot. I'm never going to amount to anything. Look, God. Look. But what you don't know is God does not see you as a report card. God is not looking at you with the label of your past. God sees you from a different perspective. The perspective that is bondaging you, that has a stronghold on you, is a lie. It's not the truth. It's not who you are. So if that's the truth, if what, if, if what is holding us back, imprisoned by our past, if, if it's just lies, then what's the solution? Wouldn't you agree with me? It's pretty simple. If, 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 if the problem is a lie, then the solution is the truth. See, what I need is the truth to combat the lie, the, the, the divine power to demolish that stronghold. I need the truth. And that's what I love about, that's what I love about teaching, really, and preaching. And I get to spend time with you every week like this because you will spend hundreds of hours out there listening to every every lie of hell about you, but you can come in here for a few minutes and we can demolish those strongholds and you can hear the truth about what God says about you from his word because his word is truth. His word is truth. So let me show you in this next verse in 2 Corinthians 10, 
verse 5, the very next one. How do you fix this whole stronghold thing? The, the, the things that have a stronghold on our life. Very clearly, he tells us. We demolish arguments. That's, that's the stuff the devil has been whispering in your ear every day of your life. That's, the, that's what we're talking about there. We demolish every pretension that sets itself up against, check it out, the knowledge of God, meaning what God says about you, okay? And we're going to take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. See, that's what we're going to do today, that if, that if you're going to experience a breakthrough, if you're, gonna, if you're gonna experience a new season, then you need, to, you need to understand the power of your past, that that power of your past, we have to change it. It has to shift from no longer being something that imprisons us, a weight that is pushing us down. It needs to turn into the platform that you stand on that will propel you into breakthrough. Can I get an amen? Yeah. So here is some truth then. You need some truth. We need, we need to combat the lies with truth. So today I wanna give you a new platform based on the truth of God's word. Three, really, three truths that you need to receive or internalize today. Here's the first thought in changing your past from a prison to a platform is this. Write it down, that we have to recognize that your biggest sins are not too big for God's grace. Your biggest sins are not too big for God's grace. Being in ministry and helping people for many years, I've, one of the things that has been profoundly aware to me is that so many people live their life consumed by guilt. Eat, eaten up by it. And hear me on this, you guys. Guilt is not from God. It is, it is not from God. Um, you have a real enemy, a spiritual enemy, that would love to get you to just tread water, even drown in an ocean of guilt. You know why? Because guilt paralyzes action. Guilt immobilizes. Guilt paralyzes to where we start thinking like, well, I'm never going to conquer this. Well, this, this stain will never go away. I'll never remove this label, this mistake, this issue, this problem, this, I'll never be able to. Why even fight it then? It ain't gonna change. Why even fight it? It's just, it's just the way, it's, it's just, why even try? And the other thing that guilt does is, is, it, is it breeds self-hatred, doesn't it? That the more we sit in it and bathe in it, we, the more we loathe ourselves. The more we just hate ourselves. But the Bible talks about this other thing called the con- conviction or literally the conviction of the Holy Spirit that is something very different than guilt. See, guilt pushes down. Conviction will raise you up. Conviction gives you the power to change our lives. Check out what the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. This is an incredibly powerful verse, but a conditional verse. I need you to see it. It's both powerful and conditional on it. There's some conditions on the power of this verse. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, okay, if we don't, if we don't, it, it, and I would say, don't just confess, if we don't ask us forgiveness, but if we actually turn, if we change directions, if we repent from those things, if we do this, then what? Then God is faithful, meaning he'll do it. He'll do it every time. He'll do it, he'll do it again, and he'll do it again, and he'll do it again every time. He'll do it. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness, to wipe us clean completely of all unrighteousness. That's got to be one of the most powerful scriptures of the Bible right there. How many of you remember these? How many of you know what these are? Remember these things? Come on now. Everyone who had these when they were a kid? Hey, any kids? You don't know what these is? If you're from Oildale, this is an iPad. <laughs> so jacked up. I love you. I love everybody, okay? I do. I can say that. I got family lives in Oildale and stuff, and I was, I was like an executive pastor in Oildale, so it comes out every now and then. I'm, we, we believe you can have fun in church, okay? This, this here is an Etch-A-Sketch. It's an Etch-A-Sketch. You remember these. You, you draw things, write things, and, and don't try to do a circle now. Remember, that like, you try to, oh, just, man, that'll frustrate you real good, huh? Arrgh! Don't, uh, just do the lines, draw your thing, and, or write something, and but, but then you'd make a little mistake. You'd go off track. It would, what do you do? Just turn around and shake it up. This, this verse, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, is the Etch-A-Sketch verse of the Bible. This, this verse says, when you, when you get off track, which we do, when you make a little mistake here, which you do, when you make a mess of the picture that it was supposed to be, which it'll happen, which happens with me. Life is difficult. These stupid knobs of life 
keep taking me the wrong, what do you mean right, left, right, what's the, and you get right, it's like right to left, left to right circle, sometimes life is difficult, and you need to come before God and go, God, I messed it up again, guess what, every time, God will say, don't worry about it, I shake it, I shake it, I shake it, you're good. So, let me ask you, what, what's on your Etch-A-Sketch? What is, what is the, the prison? What is the weight? What are you carrying today? What would you bring in today even with your Etch-A-Sketch? That you're hiding. You don't even want anyone to see. Mine, sometimes mine says anger and frustration and bitterness and hurt. Sometimes my Etch-A-Sketch gets those things on it, and i got to shake it out. What does yours say? What is, does yours say some labels that other people... Maybe even your own mistakes. Maybe even you put on you. Maybe yours says liar. Maybe yours says adulterer. Maybe yours says abortion. And you carry, you carry it around with you. And God wants to give you a clean slate. There is no sin too great for God's grace. And then he goes even a step further. Here's the cool part. Jeremiah 31, 34. The Bible says, God says, I will forgive their wickedness, and then say this out loud with me, and will remember their sins no more. Say it again, and remember their sins no more. Say it again, and remember their sins no more. The all-powerful, almighty, ever-present God makes a choice to limit his memory forever to not even bring it up again, to just like, so why are you keep bringing it up? It's gone. It's erased. It's not even on the Etch-A-Sketch anymore. It's not a part of you anymore. It's gone. It's purified. It's zapped out. He doesn't see it. Commit it to God's grace. Here's the second thought that you, the second truth that we need to replace those strongholds, those lies that we've been bought into that are imprisoning us. Here it is. Write it down. The second truth is that you are not what you have done, you are who God says you are. You are not what you have done. Someone needs to receive this today, please. You are who God says you are. You're not what you've done. It doesn't define you. Your identity isn't in it. Listen, you are the very product of the God breath, the God idea before you were ever formed. You are the product of God's design, and that is incredible beautiful and awesome. You see, Satan tries to so hard to get us to personalize our sin and personalize our past, doesn't he? He tries to get us like, he tries to attach that thing to us, the sin and that past. Like, like you're, you're not someone who told some lies, told some untruths. You're a label. You're a liar. That's what he wants you to, to, to put on you. You're not, you're not someone who was unfaithful, you're an adulterer. You're not someone who just, you know, took some things that didn't belong to you. You're a thief. The Bible says that if we look lustfully at another woman or lustfully at another person, that we commit adultery in our hearts. And so some of you know that, and you walk around with this label, oh, I'm an adulterer at heart. I messed up again. I, I, I took my mind, my eyes, I went there, I did that, and, and that's it. I want you to hear something, please. Sin is an event. Sin is never, ever a person. Sin is not a person. It's an event. The Bible, and let me just say this, you guys. I pray that God, the God in heaven, that there, is, there are those of you here that are in chains. You're in, you're in the chains of your past, just imprisoned by it, your mistakes. And I pray that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you will recognize God's view of you today in Jesus' name. Look what it says. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Paul writes, anyone, say that word out loud with me, anyone... Say it again. Anyone, that includes you, okay? That's you, that's, that, that's me. Anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. He says the old life, you know where it is? The old, the old mistakes, the old sin, the old expectations, the old pain, the old issues, where are they at? It's gone, baby. It's not around anymore. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Look, and here's, I'll give you some bad news. So the bad news is if, if you are not in Christ today, then if you don't belong to Christ, then you are defined by you and only you. It's kind of the bad news. What you, what you have done and what you can make of it. 
And you know what? Some people are able to make lemon out of lemonade. They're able to do that. But you know what? Without belonging to Christ, this belonging is up to you. It's up to you. You are whatever you make out of it. You are, it's, it's just, it rests on you. But those who belong to Christ, the good news is if you choose to belong, your identity is found in who God says you are, in what he says he has created you for, not your past. Your past becomes a platform instead of a prison. Amen? Here's the third thing. I pray you're going to internalize this today. That you cannot change your past, but Christ can change your future. You cannot change your past, but the risen Jesus Christ can change your future. And God doesn't waste anything. I'll say it again. You're not defined by your past. You're prepared by your past. So someone molested you, and that was a tragedy. That was, that's a tragedy beyond tragedies. And, I, and my heart breaks with you and for you, but you can't change it. You were raped. You were abused. It's terrible. It is awful. People do crazy, awful things. But you can't change it. So you were young and you made some decisions. One thing led to the other. You got, preg- you, you got an abortion. I know. And, and I'll tell you, like, I believe that baby's in heaven right now. But you can't change it. So you said some things you didn't mean to say, you didn't want to say, you wish you didn't say. You did some things you wish you didn't do you wish we're not part of your history, you can't change it. But I'm telling you, moving forward, the power of Christ can be with you. Never forget that every single saint has a past. And every single sinner, that's you, that's every one of you, every one of us has a future through the power of Jesus Christ. And when, and when the enemy, when, the, when Satan tries to whisper in your ear, ear and try to bring you back into the prison of your, your past and tries to remind you who you are, you remind him who he is and where he's going. You tell him, you're defeated, devil. I don't need to listen to your lies. You're the father of lies. I am the, the apple of my father's eye. And God is going to make even the good things or the bad things turn to good things because I am called by God. I love God. I'm called according to his purpose. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper, devil. You're going to hell. I'm going to heaven. Thank you very much. I love the way Paul said it in Philippians chapter 3. Verse 12 through 15, he said this. He said, I don't mean to say that I've already achieved all these things. And, you know, in other words, he's saying, like, I'm not perfect. And I I straight up tell you guys, you guys know I'm not perfect, man. we're, We're not. I haven't reached perfection. He said, but I press on. And that's what God will empower you to do, to press on to your breakthrough, to press on through that. He said, no, dear brothers and sisters, I haven't achieved it, but I focus on one thing. And I think that's funny because then he gives us two things. He goes, I focus on one thing, and he gives us, he's like, but I can't just give you one. Here's two. I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past. Everybody say that with me. One, two, three, forgetting the past. Say it again. One, two, three, forgetting the past. Say it again. One, two, three, forgetting the past. Looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race, to where my breakthrough lies, to receive the crown of life which has been prepared for me through Christ Jesus. I forget what is behind. He's calling us. I, I looked up that word, forgetting what is past. The Greek for that is very descriptive. Check it out up on the screen here. It says that word there, what God, for, to forget what is in the past means to treat with thoughtless inattention, to willfully neglect, to leave behind intentionally. To banish from one, one's thoughts, to disregard on purpose, to cease remembering some of you, your spiritual enemy has been haunting you with your past. You treat it with thoughtless inattention. You willfully ne- neglect the label that has held you hostage. You leave intentionally the sin behind you. You banish from your thoughts the lies of the evil one. You disregard on purpose the opinions of other people, and you cease remembering that which God let go in Christ Jesus a long time ago. That it was what that means, to forget that which is in the past. I'm telling you right now, you're not what others say you are, that there is no sin too great that God's grace cannot erase. And you cannot change your past, but the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, he can and will change your future. 
I believe God's going to give us a, a different future. See, the enemy would love for you to just get trapped in your past to never see what is before you, to never see your breakthrough. He wants you going in endless circles of past to present, never looking, never having vision for your life. But today, in Jesus' name, you're going to be set free from the prison of your past. It'll become, it'll become a platform for your future, for your breakthrough. And let me just give you a little picture of what God says. Jeremiah 29, here's the prophet telling us, this is what God says about you. I know the plans I have for you, God says declares the Lord, like, I know, I know what my plan is for your life. No, no, no. That, that, it's not what she said. It's not what he said. It doesn't matter what your history is. I know, declares the Lord, the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you. You know that word prosper means to advance, to break through. God says, I have plans for you to break through and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. That's the picture that God has for you. And if you want to have a life marked by breakthroughs, you're going to have to learn this key of the power of your past. It needs to change. It needs to shift from a prison to a platform. And in order to do that, you need to fill your mind with truth today. I hope you internalize this. And, and at the end of these breakthrough series, we're ending differently. So I don't want no one to get, you know, don't miss this last part. Because what we're going to do is we're going to bring our past once and for all to Christ. We're going to bring it to God and say, okay, I'm leaving it here. I, I, I am not only going to confess it, I'm not only going to ask for forgiveness from it, but I, I'm going to do that, and I'm changing directions, God. I'm leaving this thing behind. I'm leaving that label. I'm leaving my mistakes. I'm leaving those expectations that weren't met. I'm leaving it behind, and I'm going forward into a new hope, a new future with you. Come on, will you stand to your feet with me? I don't want you to miss this. During this series, we're going to end with a breakthrough song, and I challenge you to bring your past Bring whatever is imprisoning you before the altar of God. That you can bring that. That you can bring your unmet expectations, your untreated pain. That whatever it is today that is imprisoning, that is a weight that is on you. Today, God, I'm not even going to wait. Today, God, I'm going to bring it to you. Today, God, I'm receiving a new life, a new hope. I'm receiving a future in Jesus' name.